today and as we prepare now to enter into our worship let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries Lord Jesus you came to reveal to us the love of God our Father Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord Jesus you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Lord Jesus you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfamiliar prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the staff and her fingers plied by the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her, extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her, give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife, shall be, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. In the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed 
are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourself know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for the day to overtake you like a thief. For all of, for all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let's stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So you knew 
that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not have then put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, as I'm sure you have noticed as we are winding down uh, the weekends of the ordinary time of the liturgical year, uh, actually this weekend and next weekend are the last weekends, and next weekend we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, we can see that our readings are already reminding us of what the Church tries to emphasize at this time uh, of the liturgical year as it is coming to an end. And that is, it reminds us of how we are to not only open our hearts to receive the Lord when He comes, but if we've noticed the last week or two, and we're starting to see it in our daily readings at daily Mass as well, we are reminded by the Church, by the cycle of readings, of how we will be held accountable for what we have done in the final judgment, or also in that particular moment of our own death when the Lord comes to us. And today, as we hear from St. Matthew's Gospel, we see in this parable of what is often referred to as the talents, and there's sort of a, a play on the word because talent also is a form of, of a monetary value, but it also means gifts, as you know, the gifts, or we use the word in English, talents that people are given. We see that in the three examples that are given, each of these three servants have a differing amount of talents that are given to them by the master. And of course, as the scripture reminds us, the master takes lead. And of course, this is reminiscent of the life of Christ himself, having been born, having suffered, having died, having rose from the dead, and having ascended to the Father. He, in a sense, leaves for a while. And of course, the imagery that here that Matthew is reminding us is all of a sudden, just like the master returns after having divided the talents among the people, so the Lord will return, whether that's in the moment of our own particular death or at the end of time. And as we hear the gospel and we see what unfolds for us, there is an evaluation and even a judgment that is made on each of those servants as to how they utilize their talents. I think when we hear this gospel, we hear it often, and I'm sure you've heard many homilies and reflections on it, myself included. I think we many times focus in on how the people acted with their talents. You know, what did they do? Did they make more money? Did they, what did they have to give back? And that's very important because the Lord is saying to us, you know, how do you use what you have received so that you can give back to the Lord uh, more than what you have received? And it sets up for us a beautiful, as we know, the Christian model for discipleship and stewardship of our time and our talents and our treasure. But I think, too, one of the ways we can look at this gospel that's a, a little different, and I might pose it to you for reflection this weekend, is that we, in our world today, I think sometimes feel in the human condition that everyone has to be equal. And I want to be very careful what I'm saying. We all are equal because we are created in the dignity and the image of God. We are all beloved equally by God. But you know, dare I say it, not all of us have the same talents, and not all of us have the same amount of talents. Now, I know in our culture today, I'm probably speaking heresy, you might go to jail for that. But you think about it in the sporting activities, everyone's a superstar in sports, everyone's a musician, everyone's an artist. No, we're not. You know, I, I couldn't be a quarterback, or at least a good one. I certainly couldn't be a violinist, although I'd sometimes use it, I would love to do that. I don't have some of the talents that others have, and others don't have maybe talents that I might have. We all know that. We all have unique talents and gifts 
that had been given to us by God. And I would like to contend today as we reflect in the scripture, I think one of the things sometimes in our culture that constantly consumes our time and almost makes us run in circles, or I say like the hamster on the wheel, we just keep running faster and the wheel just keeps moving, is sometimes we try to convince ourselves that we have talents that we don't have, or that we can do things that you know, we, we really probably aren't all that good at doing. You know, I say that all the time sometimes with young people, and this whole thing, you know, sports and activities, and we're doing so many things, and I always say, pick one, and do it real well, you know, and do it to the best of your ability and enjoy doing it and love doing it and put your energy and soul into it. One of the great myths of our society, I think, is that we can do everything and anything. We can't. But what we can do is we can do what we have been given, the talents we have been given. We can do them not only well, we can do them exceedingly if we place our time and our energy, our discipline, and our focus into that. And God, for a purpose, gives all of us, in the beauty of creation, different talents so that we can be complementary to each other. And I would contend from a Christian anthropological point of view, how we understand humanity as Christians, is that God does that because he wants us to cooperate with each other. In our Judeo-Christian tradition, we don't believe anyone is an island unto themselves. We are a community, and particularly in our Christian tradition and our Christian beliefs, we are a community that shares and gives to each other, builds each other up. And that beautiful analogy that we hear of St. Paul and the idea of the body, you know, all parts of the body, one might be the finger, one might be the arm, Christ is the head. And how the body brings all the parts together, but works in beautiful unison. And I would contend as we hear this gospel today, you know, what will the Lord be disappointed at? The Lord is not going to be disappointed if we're not an all-star baseball player, if we can't be. But what the Lord will be disappointed at, and what we will be judged upon, is the Lord will say to each of us, I gave you this tremendous talent. I gave you this tremendous gift. What did you do with it? How did you nurture it? How did you make it grow in abundance? And how did you share it with your brothers and sisters? You know, why is Jesus saying the master is so upset with the servant that went and buried the talent? He's upset because he didn't share it. Fear paralyzed him. And in that fear, he went out and even simply put that talent and buried it into the ground useless, returned it back to the master a little dirty without any type of investment. And you know, sometimes I think because of our culture too, we're afraid that if we make bad investments and lose, that we sometimes fail. And I think that's part of this gospel as well. I, one of my first pastors used to always say, when I was a parochial vicar, he said, you know, make a decision. Do something. If it's the right decision and things go well, Take a minute, pat yourself on the back, smile, and say, oh, that was pretty good. If it just turned into a fiasco and collapsed, fix it, and fix it fast, and do it the right way. And I think that's the message for all of us as Christians. We have to invest ourselves. And sometimes it won't work. Sometimes, very realistically, it can fail. But we can't allow the failure to impede us. We must go back and try again. You know, the fear that paralyzed the servant who simply buried the talent was that he was so concerned about being chastised by the Lord and he missed the whole point that the servant, the master said, I'm chastising you because you didn't utilize the talent. My dear brothers and sisters, let's utilize our gifts. And I think particularly as we've learned in these past nine months with this pandemic, sometimes it gets harder and harder and more challenging and challenging to do the things not only that we feel we enjoy to do or even have an obligation to do, but to utilize those talents. But if anything, hasn't it sometimes taught us how we have to look at things a little differently and how we have to use those talents in a little different way? And maybe how we have to grow and expand our thinking and our modes of being and our modes of action. You know, as we're coming close to the end of this liturgical year, 
the church does remind us that we will be held accountable for what we have done, and as I say to you so often, I believe so much too, what we failed to do, what we failed to do. And you know, I think sometimes, well, we, as I say so often, as we focus on all the sins of commission, you know, we have to think sometimes, what are those sins of omission? What are those talents that God really gave? How did I use them? How did I step forward in ministry? How did I step forward in giving of my time, my talent, my treasure? How did I use how did I cultivate the ground? How did I plant the seeds that allow a productive harvest? We all know that when things are put away, or stored away, sometimes when we pull them out, they're mildewed, sometimes they're rotten, sometimes they've disintegrated. And here we thought we were going to preserve them. What we need to focus on and what we need to strive for, as today's gospel reminds us, is that indeed, let us use all that God has given us, and let us also not be afraid to turn to God and ask Him for the grace and the help so that we can use the talents He gave us even better and that we can even improve upon them for the greater glory of God and for the service of our brothers and sisters. My dear friends, we continue now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, Grateful for all the gifts we have been given, we ask for help <coughs> and the need we have to serve God faithfully as we offer him now our prayers. For church leaders, may God look graciously upon them as they, as they faithfully steward the riches he has entrusted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the world, may the Lord guide us with wisdom in our role as stewards of the resources of this earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who experience the pain of separation and divorce, may the love of God sustain them through every trail. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit grant us courage and strength as we live our call to discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For each of us gathered here, may God help us in our efforts to seek to follow his will in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the prayers of our parish family, listed in our parish book of intention, for these prayers and all the prayers we hold close to our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For those who have died, especially Gregory Jets, Jets, our parishioner who passed away this past week, and Joseph Purcell, brother and brother-in-law of parishioners John and Gloria Purcell, and June Amaro Byers, from whom this Mass is offered. Also, for all the deceased members and benefactors of St. James Parish, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. God of all good gifts, we know you are with us as we answer your call to act boldly in your service. Hear the prayers we offer today 
which we make in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our benefit of all the souls of the church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may faithfully be united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of you. The mystery of faith. partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
right? We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to be seated for just a moment. Um, we're very delighted again this weekend to have here at the parish Mr. Ronnie Salsa, and uh, Ronnie is in charge of the uh, Beth Bethlehem Christian Families Foundation. Many of you are familiar with the work that they do, but Ron's going to talk a little bit about what's been happening to the Christians uh, since his last time here with us in the Holy Land, and immediately following our Mass and throughout uh, the day tomorrow, after the Mass is tomorrow, I should say, uh, Ron has uh, a whole series of beautiful woodworkings and devotional items that were carved by the people of Bethlehem and uh, the proceeds go to help the Christians uh, in the Holy Land. So, Ron, it's so great to have you with us and I'm so glad to see that you're doing so well. Sign of the cross in our Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Monsignor for his continuous prayers and support of the Christians of the Holy Land. Thank you, Monsignor. Also, I'd like to thank you and every time I visit St. James. Thank you and God bless you. Wow, it's been a strange year so far, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It is for me, actually. I was diagnosed with colon cancer at the end of last year. And uh, thank God I had the surgery January 2nd, and it was in stage one, so no need for chemo or nothing. So, but after a few weeks of, of recovery, uh, we got this uh, hit with this pandemic thing. Uh, uh, last year, I have met the Patriarchate of Jerusalem, Archbishop Batista of Isabella, and the Chancellor, Father Bohim Shumal. And in the meeting, they told me that the Christians in the Holy Land need the letter P three times. The first one is prayers. The second one is pilgrimage. And the third one is projects. This year, I'm coming to you with a message from the Ministry of Tourism. They told me in a bomb conversation that we are the only hope now. As you know, Bethlehem, it's a tourist city. About 80% of the people over there depends on tourism, such as hotels, 72 of them. Restaurants, about 120, and souvenirs and carver shops, which is about 400 of them. Since March 5th, zero income. Imagine. Since March 5th. And there's no financial support, no government support, and actually there's no even government nowadays, and also no unemployment compensations like here. Basically, they are by their own. While I can't invite you to visit the Holy Land or encourage you to visit the Holy Land in a pilgrimage tour, but I can still ask you for your prayers and to continue to pray for your brothers and sisters of the Holy Land and you for your support to stop by the parish uh, downstairs hall and see what I brought to me was carvers, artists, and their families work. No donations, please. We want our carvers to get back to their work. And uh, again, I'd like to thank Monsignor Collett for giving us the hope to continue our mission. At the end, our message is a message of hope. Persecuted believers will not be forgotten. Christian persecutions will not be ignored. And Jesus still has the victory. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Ronnie. We certainly do not, nor can we forget uh, our Christian brothers and sisters who are not only an extreme minority now in the Holy Land, but an uh, ever-increasing smaller demographic. And uh, we must ensure that the presence of Christianity continues in the very birthplace and the very home of our Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you, Ronnie, for all the work you have done in your family, and especially your perseverance through just as uh, you humbly said, but I know it's real too, not only have you gone through personal, physical uh, trials this, this year, but certainly even in the COVID, I think this is the first time you're back in the Diocese of Greensburg since March because it's curtailed even Ron's ability and the Christian family uh, ability to, to go out to our parishes. So we're, we're glad to have you here. So thank you very much. And uh, certainly be assured of our prayers and our support. 
Uh, also, I'd just like to remind everyone, this week you're going to be receiving, or should be receiving in the mail, uh, your end of the year, our, our stewardship uh, report. You're going to be seeing a special mail that we've done. I ask you to look over it. It's uh, very informative, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact uh, the parish office or to see me personally. Uh, again, I want to thank all of you for your tremendous support uh, over these almost past year now. It's hard to think for nine months of this. Uh, but thank you for your continued support to us. Uh, also, finally, I see that we're, we're doing a tremendous job, and I thank everyone who's already contributed. We're doing our Thanksgiving food drive, uh, and non-perishable items can be brought to uh, the back of the church, and we're going to be distributing them uh, to parishioners in need and also to our local food bank. So um, you have through next weekend to bring in uh, those non-perishable goods, and thank you for doing that. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.